Hello and welcome to my channel on the hook crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and today let's find out what's been on the hook. Well obviously I'm wearing a brand new tee today. I hope you had a wonderful week, a wonderful yarny week where you did lots of crafty things. I've been busy too and I wanted to finish my date night tee so I did. I finished my date night tee. I am now wearing it. I did not block it. Not that it would matter because this is mostly, uh, this actually all acrylic and polyester, 82 acrylic, 18% polyester, made from Date Nights yarn by Lion Brand. Um, I like the yarn. It's a size four and the colorway is Morganite. It's a beautiful color of pink. I really like it. It's very dressy. This is an up close look. It's got lots of bling in it. Just a lot of bling all over it. And uh, when I've, I had someone ask me a question about the stitch pattern that I used across here, that's uh, one row of very special stitches. And I have yet to find anything on the web that shows how to make this. So I came up with this on my own and um, I call it Jeannie's Herringbone tri Treble Crochet Stitch. <laughs> I couldn't find anywhere on the web where they were using this. Um, the, the biggest one I saw was for double crochet for a herringbone. So this is the treble crochet or triple crochet. Let me pull that apart so you can see it. See right there. And the, the stitches are, they kind of fill in the gaps. Not totally, but they do fill in pretty well. I just did five or six of them here. I just wanted to show you how they look together. To make the triple herringbone or Jeannie's triple herringbone <laughs> stitch is to uh, wrap your hook twice and insert your hook into a stitch yarn over and pull through and you have several hooks on loops on the hook and you work off one and then two and then two and I think that's all if there are any more left you work those off so you work off one and then you work them off two at a time until you're finished with the stitch that is a, a modified herringbone. A real herringbone would be yarn over, put your hook through the stitch, yarn over and pull up, and then you pull through that first stitch without yarning over. So you're really kind of slip stitching that first loop, and then you work off two at a time from there. So that's kind of a basic herringbone, but this is a treble crochet herringbone stitch. So I describe it in the pattern and of course I just told you how to do it so you already know but um, that was one row that I wanted to insert into the sweater to make it a little more special so I did that and let me stand up and let this let me show this to you this is the date night tea it is very comfortable it is not boxy this is not a boxy tea this is a it may have three it may have four inches of ease in it. I think that's what it came to. I can pull about an inch over with my fingers like this. And so there's an inch on each side of the front and an inch on each side in the back. So that makes a total of four inches of ease. So I didn't make the sweater very boxy. What I did, which was kind of interesting, was I curved the bottom under and I did not need an extra row. When I finished the sweater and I had sewn the side seams, I sewed in my yarn ends and I found that I didn't really need another row around the bottom, so I just left it. And it does curve under nicely. It doesn't flip out. It curves under nicely. And um, I show you in the pattern how to do that. But this is kind of an interesting look for me. I don't usually make close fitting sweaters and a 4 inch ease is about as um, the smallest amount of ease that I ever put in a sweater. I like to have some room in the sweater um, to move around in and all that. So this was not a large, large sweater. Um, I did finish the sleeves off with several rows because they ended right here. So I finished them off with several rows and the neckline is very high. I made it very high because that's how I wanted it. It's not a crew neck. It's a v-neck with a soft v and so th there's some things about the sweater I might have already told you or might not have. This is what it will look like on the web. I'm going to, uh, on my Etsy shop actually, I will release it tomorrow and in the morning look for an inbox email from me and that will have an offer code where you can use uh, on any of my patterns but um, 
for this pattern especially, but for any of my patterns, you can use that and um, receive quite a discount on the pattern. So this is the Date Night Tea. Again, it will be released tomorrow. Um, if I can get it out to Etsy, I'll do it tonight and even the email. I'm just going to send it out as soon as I have it. So if you haven't signed up to be in the community, be sure to go down into the description box, click that link and sign up for the community. It's free and you actually get a free pattern when you sign up uh, for the Hug Me Cow and great for Christmas presents and for fall and winter wearing you can make them now and uh, sometimes you can find yarn on sale for winter time in the spring and summer so if you do that then you can really make your gifts at a very low price and be able to give someone a handmade gift and not have to spend a lot of money just your this your time which is really what you want to give to people is time not necessarily an expensive gift so in my opinion that's a really nice thing to do for people at christmas time and i start my gifts way before that i don't always like last year i didn't start my gifts until probably october um, I usually start them in the summertime and I think about what I'm going to do and then I start working on it. I order the yarn if I need to and then I'm kind of all set and so when it gets a little bit cool I'm staying inside I'm crocheting my Christmas gifts so um, it's just an idea that you can take and use if you want to but anyway you get that hug me cow pattern for free when you sign up for the community so be sure to go down and sign up for it and uh, that way you'll be in the loop so when a pattern comes out you'll get that special discount any free patterns that i send out you will get those and maybe a birthday wish i don't know but i'm not going to load up your email with a whole lot of messages i'm not going to do that so that's enough about the date night tea i just wanted to show it to you i'm modeling it i really like it in fact this yarn is very stretchy and look at that it's just very very stretchy and it gives quite a bit so I really like that about this particular yarn and the stitch patterns that I use were kind of loose so that the yarn um, is is flexible and I don't know if it's a function of the date night yarn or if it's the stitches or maybe both I don't know but I do like the way it fits it's not tight and it gives plenty under the arm and everywhere else so uh, I will tell you, I did use a seven and a half opening for the armhole, and then I sewed below that. So when I put the pieces together, I sewed below that seven and a half mark, and that would make a 15 inch opening for the sleeve. And then I brought it together with some decreases, added some rows to it, and I'm all done. So I'm excited to finish this. If I make it again, I'll probably make it maybe a little more boxy. I might make it out of a cotton yarn. I might make it out of um, another acrylic yarn. I've got lots of yarn over there that I can use. And I might drop back to a DK size, but for speed, I really like a four yarn. And if I can get a four yarn going where it looks nice, then I prefer a four because it just takes less time. Now, moving on, I have a, uh, a little update on my sunlit tee. That's the next tee to come out. And I'll be sending that pattern out very soon, hopefully very, very soon. And this is called my Sunlit Tea. It's made with Sheep G's, Sheep G's <laughs> Stone Washed in the Yellow Jasper. Beautiful color, very, very, very soft. And this is how far I have um, moved toward the almost the end of the sweater. This is the back of the sweater. And I have maybe probably this much more to go, maybe a little more and I will be done. Now this is a very, like I've explained, large tee. Look how big that is. Very boxy compared to the sweater that I have on. So you can make sweaters in all different styles if you want to, even with my patterns. If you want to make a boxy sweater and use another pattern with it um, that I've put out on my Etsy shop, you can certainly do that. You can make a sweater as wide or as narrow as you want, and that's how I designed them. There are no stitch counts. So I have finished the front of this and I'm working on the back. So I'll be coming out with that very, very soon. I have to decide what kind of edgings I want. I know I put a rib down at the bottom. See, I've got a rib along the bottom. I really like that as a little finishing touch and a design element that I don't use on a lot of my sweaters. For example, this one I have on does not have a rib at the bottom or on the sleeves or the neck. I just didn't want to use that as a design element in this particular sweater, but I am using it in the sunlit tee. So so I'll be getting that out the door fairly soon. And I wanted to show you what I'm carrying this around in <laughs> because 
uh, we have something special coming up at the end of the video. This is one of my very favorite bags that Joe for Totes or Joe at Joe for Totes made for me a long time ago. This is called my llama bag. I call it my llama bag and it has really cute fabric with llamas and little cacti and everything and she's lined it in um, pink. Inside is a uh, looks like a contrasting pattern. Maybe the same one is on the outside. I think it is actually. This is the contrasting um, fabric and the sides have two pockets, one on each, two on each side actually. It has the black bias handles so they're very very strong and I don't have to worry about breaking my handles or anything. And then on the back side she has a zippered pocket here with the contrasting um, pattern of fabric right there which is very very cute all of this is kind of accented in pink and green I really like that and there's some black around the top as well which kind of sets off those handles I really like this and then on the inside is a green interior and you can see I'm keeping my sunlit tea in there and then there are some uh, pockets in here that are mesh let me get down here where you can see those those are mesh pockets right there I don't know if you can see my finger back there. <laughs> Those are mesh pockets and uh, I've, I've loved this forever because it has plenty of pockets in it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six pockets on the outside and two pockets on the inside. So it's a wonderful design and she made this for me quite a while ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And I've really enjoyed carrying this around. Now this is where my sunlit tea is living and it will be in there until it graduates to my closet. So that is the project uh, progress I've made on my sunlit tea. Let me put that back down. Now for my next project, I have two more teas to go. I have the sunlit tea and then I have this one. And this is really turned out to be one of my favorites. This is called the Block Party Tee and it will be made in blocks of color. So the bottom will be a light color and then the body will be a darker color and then the light color will again reappear up here and then we'll edge the sleeves with the dark color and also the neckline with the dark color. So I'm excited. I think it's going to be really pretty. I've drawn it out and it should look very, very nice. And you can also make something like this in two colors that are very near to each other like a dark blue and a light blue or a dark pink and a light pink, dark purple, light purple. You can do that. This is a very stark contrast between the turquoise and the white but that's how I wanted to start off. I really wanted to make a statement with this tea and I love it. It's called the Block Party Tea and I'm making it from Comfy Cotton which is one of my favorite yarns and this is from Lion Brand of course, not sponsored. It's a number three yarn, 392 yards on the cake and I still have one more of these cakes I think but anyway this will be plenty for me to finish this particular tea and then the darker color is the Lamia Diamond low pilling yarn that I received in a box uh, that was being passed around for you with YouTubers I received it last week and it's called the Traveling Surprise Fiber Box and the next person to get it, I still haven't heard from her. I, I wonder if she's received it yet. Maybe not. But the box is um, full of yarns from different YouTubers. And I saw this yarn in there and I took a three, the three little skeins out. They're really pretty. And I thought, I need to use that right away. I just think that's a beautiful color for summer. So I decided to pair it up with the white. So it's going to be really cute and a special stitch pattern on the body so it won't be boring to crochet. It's really been kind of fun to get this started. So this is the front of the of the sweater. It's going to be fairly simple, but it's going to make its statement with the different color blocks. So I'm looking forward to finishing this. And again, this is called the Block Party Tea and it'll be coming out probably in a couple of weeks, maybe if I can get it finished. So we'll see it when it gets here. As you know, a couple of weeks ago, or I guess it was last week, I had a giveaway for my coffee break sweater and this is it right here. Uh, I, I had the, the yarn, I have the yarn and the pattern to give away here and you'll notice I still have it in my office because the nice lady named Diane who won that lives all the way in Australia. So we worked out a plan where I would send her a couple of patterns 
in a PDF form. And then I'm going to select another winner for the coffee break sweater uh, pattern and the yarn. And it also, um, I'm sending out a yarny bag that goes with it. It says no problem on it. Y'all have seen that. So cute. I <laughs> love that. Anyway, that will go out with this giveaway. So I'm going to go back to the video where we saw all signed up for the yarn and the pattern for the coffee break sweater. And I'm going to select another winner. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins this the second time around. Here we are at the computer and I have put the URL for the April 5th show, which is right here. And this is the one where we typed in the word coffee in our comment in order to uh, be in the running for this. So I'm going to see how many comments we had. So here it is down here. <laughs> All right, 491. So we had 491 people sign up for this. Now, um, as you know, the giveaway rules for me are that if you live in another country, I will send you patterns instead of a package. And the reason is because very often the package takes forever to get there. And second of all, it costs a small fortune to send it. So I would prefer to send something on the computer or via uh, internet, a PDF pattern or two, and then we will uh, do another drawing for this particular um, prize. So what I'm gonna do is hit start and we'll see who comes up as the winner for the coffee break pattern and yarn. And that would be Crystal Gott. Crystal Gott, and there is her word coffee right there in her comment. So Crystal, you were the winner the second time around for the coffee break sweater pattern and yarn. Congratulations, Crystal. Now, the next giveaway is for the basic stitch yarn and that was announced on, hold the phone there, April the 8th. And so I have the April 8th video up on my computer with the random comment picker and we will decide who wins the basic stitch yarn giveaway. Now this is basic stitch in the red and gray color and I counted there are eight skeins of this. And there are three more skeins, and th I think it's three and a half skeins of the basic stitch in the colorway Silver Heather. This is Silver Heather. Very beautiful. And I was going to combine these because it has that same color silver in there. So I was going to combine these and make something together. And I just never could come up with what I wanted. So I just said, forget that. Um, I'm just going to give this all away. And so I'm going to do that. So it's like, Maybe a, maybe 12 skeins of basic stitch in the red and gray and also the silver heather. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins the basic stitch yarn. Here we are at the computer and there is the URL from the April 8th show. And the word was basic. So we're looking for this word in our comments. So let's find out how many comments we had with that word in them. And that would be ooh, 400 and looks like 30, 430. Let me get it up here where you can see it. 430 comments that we had with that particular word basic in that. So let's go down here and find out who wins the basic stitch yarn. This is fun. Annalise Schofield. Annalise Schofield, you have won the basic yarn. And there it says basic right there in her comment. So Annalise, you have won the basic yarn. Congratulations. All right, moving right along, we are giving away eight balls of Beaucle ice yarn. Very, very nice. I'm almost tempted to keep it, but I'm not going to because I know I won't have time to make this. So I'm going to give this away to a subscriber. And all you had to do was put in the word ice. And I remember getting a lot of comments. I read as many as I could. Uh, it was just on Monday, so uh, I wanted to make sure that we went ahead and gave all of our prizes away before I took my week off next week. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins the ice yarn. Here we are at the computer, and this is our last giveaway for the day. The URL from the 12th is there, and the word is ice, and that was for the ice yarn that we're giving away. So let's find out how many... 
unique comments we had with that word. Oops, here it is right here. I think I'd know how to do this after so many giveaways. All right, there were 300 and looks like 77. Yes, 377 comments with that word in them. Thank you for participating, everyone. Now let's pick the winner for the ice yarns. And the winner is Karen McConnell. Karen McConnell. So there is her word right there at the beginning of her comment. So Karen, congratulations. And congratulations to everybody who won today. So awesome. Thank you for participating. Congratulations to everyone who won. We had three winners today. I'm so excited. I hope you all enjoy your gifts and you have fun joining in the giveaways, even though you don't win every time. Hardly anybody wins because only one person can win one gift. But I try to give away at least two or three every time I have a video so that everybody can enjoy jumping in and maybe you'll win sometime. I hope you do. Now be sure to send me your address if you are a winner so that I will know where to send that. So everything's been cleared out. I don't have anything left over. So this is exciting. I hope to get those out next week, early next week. Even though I'll be traveling, I should be able to visit the post office and get those out the door. Now for next week, I have uh, a giveaway to be announced on the 26th. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to announce it today, but the winner will be picked on the 26th. So a week from this coming Monday, we will have a giveaway winner, uh, two giveaway winners announced. So be sure you tune in for that. Now, if you would, just put a comment down in the description box and the keyword will be June, J-U-N-E, June, and that's the month coming up in a couple of months. And I have two magazines. And if you saw my thumbnail where you clicked on to watch this video, I had my two magazines in the photo. And one is the Just Cross Stitch magazine. I kind of love this magazine. I wish I was more into cross stitch, but I'm actually not right now. So I'm going to give this away to one of the winners on Monday the 26th. So be sure to be watching on that day. Now, this is a marked page and I wanna show you this. This is a magnificent pillow. If you are a cross stitcher, this is gorgeous. I really love this for your couch, just right in the middle of your couch or in the back of a big chair. That is so gorgeous. It's all kinds of flowers. And it doesn't look like any of them are repeated. Maybe one is repeated, but the pattern is not repeated. So it's so gorgeous. I really, really like it. It's called the Wildflower Row. The Wildflower Row. Again, there it is in all its glory. So gorgeous. Now, that is one of the patterns that I really thought was pretty. is a cross-stitch pattern. But this is the other. And y'all can imagine which flowers these are. These are poppies. And this is a really pretty cross stitch. And you could frame this in. It would be so gorgeous. Look at that blue butterfly right there. And this is just very, very pretty. And if I was into cross stitch, I might give that a whirl, but I'm not. So I'm going to give this magazine away to someone who would like to uh, keep it or make a few patterns out of it or give it to a friend who does cross stitch or just put it away. You never know when you might be interested in doing that. So this is the June 2021 issue of Cross Stitch Magazine, and this will go to the winner on the 26th of April. Now, the second magazine is, of course, Crochet World, one of my favorites. I just finished giving one of these away uh, a couple of videos ago. The, the second Crochet World, or the third Crochet World, I don't know which one it was, but I think I get three of these and two go to giveaway winners. So this is the one for June of 2021, and that's why the keyword is June. This is a gorgeous magazine, even if you don't make anything out of it. Look how pretty that is, the, the colors that they chose for this beautiful doily here, which I don't make. They're very beautiful, but I haven't made a doily in, I don't know, 50 years maybe. <laughs> It's been a long time, but a lot of people are interested in making doilies. I've seen uh, Glenda of Crochet, uh, Creative Grandma, excuse me, Creative Grandma, she uh, puts out doily patterns. I think they're beautiful. I really do. I think that is just gorgeous, and the colors they used are very, very pretty. And I, I just will show you the page of Crochet 
items that are in this book. There are some blankets in here. There are some uh, summer, obviously summer crochets, some pillows, a couple of tops, a couple of purses, and a scarf, which I'm not sure. I'm sure it's made from, I'm sure this is made from cotton. There's the scarf right there. But there's some really pretty patterns in here. They're very fresh for summer. So we haven't started getting ready for fall or winter yet. We're still into June. So this magazine will go to someone on the 26th and it's Crochet World again, June of 2021. So both of those magazines will go out on the 26th to winners who will put a comment on this video and use the word June in their comment. So stay tuned for one more thing. I want to tell you, um, I have a very sweet video from Joe of Joe for Totes and she makes beautiful custom project bags and she's made three large bags like the one that I'm keeping my Persian tiles throw in. I love it, love it, love it. So you will love this video. I've already watched it and I think it's really neat the way she describes her project bag. So I'm going to let Joe take it away and then I'll be back after she's finished. Hi y'all, it's Joe with Joe for Totes and I'm so happy to be able to show you another video today and I know that the three people who have bags that I'm going to show today that are coming have waited a while because I did get called up and I have been helping to administer COVID vaccine. So their bags have been a little bit longer coming than um, we had hoped, but they're finished now and I collected three of them so I could show three together. These are the biggest bags that I make. Each one of them is 16 by 16 by 6. And even though they're the same size, they're all beautiful and they're all so different. So let me start showing you the one that goes to Joan. And Joan lives in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Her first email told me that she wanted Victorian flowers with a dark background. And I was able to find this fabric. I showed it to her. She liked it. So we went with it. <laughs> and let me show you the back of it. It just shows the fabric so much better. The bottom is black. The handles are black and the handles have a scroll design that's kind of the pinkish, um, I guess it's more pinkish than anything else, that goes with the, the pink, kind of a dark pink, rose pink, I guess, that these uh, flowers have. Her medallion turned out really pretty, I thought, and the inside of her pouch has this fabric that's a um, just a stamped print. I also used to do her zipper pull tabs and there's her zipper pull charm and on the back she has an outside zipper with some fabric that has a peachy type of pink to it that's kind of the rosy pink she has another zipper so she has another zipper pull charm and then on the inside she has one side that I don't think I've done a side like this before. So it's got a zipper pocket. So that's, you've counted it, three zippers, an outside and inside and a top zipper. <laughs> so the inside zipper pocket has some really pretty light colored fabric. I don't know if you see that, it's a pretty fabric. And then of course she has another zipper. So she has another zipper charm that I made for that. Now under this zipper bag, there are two pouches, as you can see here. There's one that's smaller and then one that's deeper and larger. And uh, you could put a cell phone in this deeper one on one side and it would fit perfectly. As you can see, I put my phone in there. And then she can put hooks or whatever in the other one. And then on the other side, she has a very large pocket that's got the same print as the inside of the front uh, snap pocket. And... Uh, there was a, I think, a mix-up with some shipping or fabric or something. I don't remember with price. So we agreed that I would just make her an extra little zipper pull tab or charm. So that's why that is there. So um, this just turned out so pretty. Such a pretty bag, I think. I think she'll really like it. So this one goes to Joan. And all three of these will be in the mail tomorrow. So they should have them by the end of the week. Now the second bag is made for Denise and she lives in Bridgewater, uh, Maine and she wanted cobalt blue and she wanted flowers and she told me some of the flowers that she really likes. Show you a close up of the medallion that I made for her and then on the inside there's some matching fabric that goes with this front that has kind of gold 
print in it. It's really pretty. Now, I emailed Denise before I started this bag, and I told her, I think I'd like to do something a little different with your bag, if it's okay with you, and that is to make it kind of more eclectic than, than I usually do by putting different colored sides on it. And she loves this cobalt blue color, so I, that's what I picked. And uh, she, she said, sure, let's go with it. Let me show you the back. And the back has another zipper pocket, and the inside fabric is blue. And then this is a really pretty butterfly type of uh, charm that I put on this zipper pull. She doesn't have black on the bottom. She has navy blue, which I thought went better with the blue of her fabric. And the handles are the same navy blue, and they have kind of the same uh, color as the front of the uh, pocket does. And then on the inside, she has uh, a pocket here and another one that will hold a cell phone. My cell phone has that little hook on it, keeps getting hung up. And then on the other side, she has a zipper pocket. So I've been doing a lot of zippers lately. <laughs> so I'm pretty good at putting zippers in now. But of course she has another little, little charm here for it. And on the inside of this zipper pocket is um, this blue, dark blue fabric. Now all of the zipper pockets that you see, the outside and the inside zipper pockets, they all go down the length of the bag. So they're all the way down to here and usually almost all the way across. I have to allow some for seams. But um, so that's that's it for Denise. But however, she also wanted a little zippered pouch to match. So if you look at the inside pocket on this, inside of her bag and if you look at this little zipper pouch they do match and the bottom of this matches the outside pocket of the big bag <laughs> and she wanted a notions um zipper pouch so i put scissors in there and put some of my hooks in there i'm taking those out so i don't mail it off with my hooks that wouldn't be good <laughs> and on the inside i've got some real funky fabric that matches pretty well and then another little charm on her zipper pull um, I just love making these charms. But anyway, this is, and she told me the dimensions that she wanted for this bag. So this will go out to Denise uh, tomorrow. Now the third bag, I have to tell you this little story about uh, why the fabric was picked for this third bag. Donna, that lives in Omaha, Nebraska, asked me if I could make a sunflower bag because during World War II, her parents eloped and her father picked sunflowers from somewhere and gave them to her mother and her mother used them as a bridal bouquet. Isn't that the sweetest story? I just love that story. So she found this fabric and she had it sent to me that has sunflowers on it. Just beautiful, beautiful. And so, um, so unique in terms of the memory that it brings to her. Now, Donna doesn't know about this inside fabric, but I found some other sunflower fabric and let me show it to you. Isn't that neat? Isn't that the neatest thing? I just love it. So on her uh, zipper, outside zipper, she has a little pull tab uh, with this little charm I put on there. And then on the inside, she has a pocket on this side that she, that she wanted to put three crochet hooks in. So let me just show you how easily those go in and how easily accessible those would be. But if she doesn't want to put them in there, and then of course she could put her phone on one side as well. If she didn't want to do that, she could uh, put them in this clear pocket, clear vinyl pocket that I made. I use the same, same fabric as the inside of um, that zipper pocket. And this, she could put anything in and see exactly what she's got in there. Isn't that great? Just like I made Jeannie, but this one has a zipper on it. And of course, because it has a zipper, she has another little pull tab with a little charm that I put on there. I'll show you that. It turned out really cute. And uh, the bottom of her bag is black, and so are her handles with a yellow little motif of uh, leaves on there. And with all the bags, I haven't showed you this on the rest of them, but they all have this little tab that's got stitch markers on it and my little logo. So, and hers does not have a, a top closure at all, which is really, really nice. If you're just ha wanting something to sit beside your chair and put all your yarn and your, your big projects in, this is perfect. You don't have to fight with opening it up and closing it and all that. So um, I don't know if I showed you that medallion on hers. 
on the front of her bag, but it turned out really, really cute. Used a really dark green for the back felt and yellow for the top. It just turned out really special. Um, so I was just really pleased how all three of these bags came out and honored really to do one that has such sentimental value for Donna uh, from her parents' wedding. So until I see you next time, this is Joe with Joe for Totes, and I hope you'll have a great rest of the week. Bye. Thank you, Joe. That was a very sweet video. Thank you so much. Appreciate you dropping by and telling us what you're working on. So you know that Joe's bags are many times for our subscribers here at On The Hook Crochet. So uh, if you want to start a conversation, we go down in the description box and catch her email there and start a conversation if you'd like to have her work on a bag for you in your personal style. It doesn't have to be anything she decides on. You can decide on the material and how you want it to be made. So if you want to start a conversation, just go there and Joe will respond to you on your email. So thank you, Joe, again. Appreciate that wonderful video. Well, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful yarny week next week. I plan to do some yarny things as well, but I will not be around for videos. So I will be back on the 26th of April. We'll select our two magazine winners, and I'll have lots to show you at that point. Remember, tomorrow is uh, the release of the Date Night Tea, which I'm wearing today. So be looking for that. If you're not in the community, be sure to join up down there because that substantial discount offer code will be there, plus a free pattern. It's free to join. You don't have to worry about paying anything or putting in a credit card. There's none of that. I've had people ask me that as well. <laughs> no, you don't have to do anything like that. So I will, I guess, be back on the 26th, and I hope to see you then. Please join me on the 26th, and let's find out what's on the hook.